Seti Hendrix is in the building. You feel me? <laughs> Send me a request, bro. Yes, sir. I had already caught that ball. Yo, you. what up? What's good? Seti Hendrix in the building. What's poppin', bro? What's good, bro? What's poppin'? Not much. Uh, just really as hot as fuck in LA today, bro. So I <laughs> yeah, I see you over there, bitch. Trying to stay cool. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you smoking on? I see you got some bro. Let me see that bit. Nah, yeah, man. I got some on um, Shark Lot of Railway. Oh yeah, I smoked that shit before. So to start off, bro, I gotta ask you how you feel about all this stuff going on with the coronavirus right now. Um, shit. Uh, uh, I feel a lot of ways about it. I feel like it's some bigger, it's some bigger shit going on. It's some whole, yeah. like a lot. They probably trying. It's like new world order, but yeah. Right now, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me right now. It's in, it's in the other hand right now. Yeah. How is this affecting you as an artist though? Like as far as like recording it and getting the music done. I'm recording right now. I got these okay, interviews. Okay, for sure. So it ain't. Right it fucked you up. You would say that it's not stopping you like that. Other than that. Yeah. You been in the house every day? Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I no. swear that shit hard as fuck for me. I got a pop up. Hard for me. Like, it, I, it ain't really, like, I ain't never been no type of nigga to be in the house all day. You feel me? I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me. What was it like growing up in Florida for you? Um, treacherous. Treacherous, that shit. Was, you know, growing up, trying to find myself. Um, ripping around the street. Uh, what, what city are you from in Florida? I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Duval. I got family from Hollywood, Florida. Because I saw you as Haitian. I'm Haitian, too. I'm Haitian and Bohemian. My daddy Haitian. My mama was Bohemian. Oh, really? That's okay. That's for sure. A little lit mix. You know, you know Creole? No, nah, I speak Patois. Oh, really? Yeah, I was, I was raised in Miami. Yeah. How did you come up with your name? Sadie Henry. Yeah. I Sadie Henry because I used to like sunglasses a lot. I love sunglasses. And um, Jimmy Hendrix and Future Hendrix. And I yeah. stay high. I'm always high. I stay high as fuck. So shit. What's the most you smoked in a day? I smoke by um, I smoke by a half. Probably about, I'll, I'll say I smoke about probably 10 grams a day. 10 grams a day? By 10, of, of all gas, for sure. By 10 grams a day. Hell yeah. I was going to say, uh, how do you think, like, coronavirus will affect the music industry, like, moving forward? You think, like, the you know, niggas won't be able to do shows for hella long, or what you think? If that's probably the only thing. Other than that, it just shows. Other than that, it's going to yeah. be a lot more live stream, a lot more. It's your music. You really finna have to rap. You really finna have to, your music can withstand because people don't finna be able to book and shows and help it go crazy. It's finna just really depend on the music. Hell yeah. When did you start getting into music? 2016. What well, was it that got you into it? Um, losing my nigga to now. I lost my dog to violence. But we've been retaliating. It's always been an even. But that's another story. But I got into rapping because losing him, and um, once I found out how raw I was, I grew a passion for it. So it yeah. went from me just wanting to get my point across to actually me wanting to like spread my music and help everybody else through my music. Yeah. Hell yeah. When you made that record low key, did you know it would blow like that? Yeah, I did. I'm lying. You did? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was going to pop off. I knew that that shit hard as fuck. That shit is wrong. It was gonna be just an SWV sample. Wasn't nobody touching that sample at the time, and everybody was doing sample. So I was like, "This bitch gonna hit." I know this bitch gonna hit. Yeah, that shit went crazy. I see you. I see you just posted the gram. You said, "You said the world gonna know about little said soon." You you think people sleeping on you right now? Shit, yeah. <laughs> shit, yeah. People sleep on this thing. It's all good though. It wasn't no, it wasn't no, 
not no bad shit. I just know I'm slept on right now. It's either I'm slept on me or niggas really holding nuts on me. Hey, clearly Instagram hating on you. I said, how the fuck this nigga not verify it? That shit weird. Oh, for sure. I've been through that. I said, man, that, <laughs> I was, that, that shit weird. But I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I got a blue check in real life. When that shit come, though, that's just going to be like another little milestone. Like, you feel me? It's all good. Hell yeah. Nah, you got a blue check in real life for sure. What artist did you grow up listening to? Um, Andre 2000, DMX, Bootsy. Gucci, Jeezy, Music Soul Child, Erica Badu, Lauren Hill, Future, uh, yeah. Tupac, motherfucking, motherfucking T Pain, yeah. Chief Keith, like a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Lil Wayne, T.I. Hell yeah. That's Trick Daddy, Rick Ross. Yeah. Oh, so taps. <laughs> You signed to DJ Drama's label, uh, Generation Now. How did that come about? I snuck in the studio and played my music. Snuck well, in the um, studio? Yeah. Nah, it, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm kind of just summarizing shit, but I really went through an A&R named Joe. But it really got real once I, I got to him by even sneaking in the studio and playing my music through another a &R. Yeah. And it just went from one ear to another till I finally got in front of Drama. And I did a tape. I did like eight songs in two days in front of him. And he heard really? it. That shit was raw. And he was like, fuck what I'm fucking with you. How the fuck you end up sneaking in the building? You was just like, fuck it. Do you think it's gonna happen? I was with really, an really engineer, and the engineer told me I couldn't come, but I was like, I'm just gonna come and set and I'm just gonna get in how I get in. So when he walked in, I snuck in through the gate while the gate was closing. He went one way, I went another way. That's, crazy. Like that. <laughs> That's hell of funny. What is your process like for selecting beats and working on links for your songs? I just go through some beats. I hit, I tell people send me beats. I post my email, tell niggas send me beats. I go through them bitches hand my hand. If the bitches raw, the bitches raw. Whichever one I choose my email, I'm just gonna click. So it's like a probability game. Shit. You be writing, you be freestyling. What you be doing? I freestyle everything. I don't write nothing. I was gonna say, I think people sleep on your rap skills because you did a you was did that song with Coney called Chop Walk. And you was rapping your ass off. I was like, this thing got really got bars. Yeah. And I did that off the door too in like what? Two, three minutes. That's crazy. That's crazy. Then I had I, a sore throat. I was tired. I was tired because Neff, Easy, Lee. I recorded so many songs that night in California in the Bay. Yeah. How you uh, link up with all the Bay Area, the North Carolina Bay Area niggas? I, mean, I see you did some shit with Neff too. My nigga Willie Joe, my manager, man. I got one of the best managers, if not the best manager in the game. Yeah, Willie Joe, man, Willie Joe plugged me in. Decent was the best. For sure, shout out Willie Joe for sure. Mm -hmm. You got a song out right now uh, with Omb Peasy. We got him in. What was the mindset when you created that? When I heard the beat, I had to turn up. I like, man, we probably me knowing me and P, we, we probably was on our third, fourth song on our yeah. sixth blunt. And we in the studio, we done heard that bitch. Probably playing with our pistols or some shit. Yeah. And I just came up with that bitch and that motherfucker. We got a man. So, so, so. <laughs> that shit's hard, though. That shit's for, for sure hard. You just did a feature with uh, 24 Hours, too. Yeah, for sure. how that connection come about? How the fuck that happened? That shit was out like, the blue. I like, really, I met the yo. And, um, how the fuck did that happen? I don't know. I think he just hurt me. He was in the yo. And I was like, let me hear some shit, I think. And 24, let me hear some shit. He was like, I played some shit. He said, hop on some shit. Yeah. He fucked around and said, this got to go on the album. Yeah. The album. <laughs> that's lit. That's a, hey, that's that's a good ass a little fucking session, bro, for sure. That's how a lot of my features happen. For real. I ain't paid for I ain't paid for The only feature I ever paid for, bro, the only feature I ever paid for, bro, was... Molly Brazen. That was in yeah. 2015. And I yeah. never even dropped the song. Yeah, that's crazy. I never even dropped the song. I think I still got the song to the day. I, I've never, I never even dropped the song. You never dropped it? Never. That was the only person I ever paid for a feature ever. Damn. Shit. Hell yeah. I mean, you can speak for, I speak for it better than me, but in the industry, like, once you, like, connect and meet a lot of niggas, it just be shit off the strength. Yeah, relationship, to be honest. 
and just see the thing as you slide, you slide. Yeah, do some shit. Hell yeah. Let, let, let's talk about the project out now, Roots 2. That's your latest project. I, I'm sure you got something new about to drop soon. Yeah, but, um, do. When you was developing Roots 2, what was what was the mindset to make it different from the first? Uh, just to be honest, uh, Roots 2 was me picking back up from Roots 1. Like, just really yeah. letting them know that shit changed because even though a lot changed in a little bit of time, you know what I'm saying? Rules two is letting them know I still got it. Yeah. Hell yeah, that shit was fire. Can we we can we expect the project this year? Yeah, yeah. BHD coming out in May. Yes, sir. The six yes, songs sir. on that. We, we got a man on there. Six songs on that. We got a man. Six songs. I know. Yeah, six. Can you tell us who on them? Uh, the what only you feature. Tell on me? That, the only feature on that tape is P. Really? That's the only feature. It's all you. The rest all me. And, I mean, it's somebody else on there. He he dropping some vocals. He dropping some words and, and some knowledge. Yeah. I will put him as a feature on there, but I'm not even gonna tell y'all who that is. I want I want that I want that to be a surprise. That's tight. Why, why did you decide to do only you? Uh, it wasn't really. I just was chose all the raw songs. Like I got too many songs. Like I said, let me get them six songs. Yeah. It's just I chose the raw ones and the ones that I happen to choose happen just to be me on them. Yeah. yeah. How how is that process when you when you make so much music, deciding on what songs to even put on the project? The cover, I go off the cover and whatever mood I'm in, what's been going yeah. on in the last two to three months. Cause it's you feel me, twelve months, three, six, nine, twelve. So whatever that I'm going through whatever two or three months that time period, you feel me? I go off that the cover and whatever the cover symbolizes for what I'm going through, I choose yeah. between them songs. Like all because I make all kinds of music. So I choose between them songs and I match it. Hell yeah. I was watching one of your old interviews, uh, I think it was fucking with uh who was that? Uh, DJ Small Eyes. And you was talking about <laughs> how you got shot, but you ain't shed no tears. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I had to say something because Smalls was making me kind of nervous, man. He was asking me Bro, some questions. I, do you feel awkward with them interviews? I be asking niggas like, uh, "Did these that last shit too?" I flip the script. I flip the script. I put them in the hot seat. I make yeah. them feel awkward. You want to make me feel awkward? I'm gonna make you feel awkward. Yeah. So you been asking me that kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> On top. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't know how niggas feel. Like, I feel like. Blast, sometimes you just put niggas on the spot. Like, you be like, damn, bro, why are we even speaking on that? Yeah, that's their job, though. That's what everybody yeah. probably got to pick and choose when you do interviews and stuff with. Yeah. Can you tell me about a surreal moment you've had so far in your music career? Um, Hello. Yeah, I can I can see you now. We back. Yeah. Uh yeah, what you were saying? I was saying, can you tell me about a surreal moment in your music career? Is it a real moment right now? A, a surreal moment, like some crazy shit. Uh I as of right now, a real moment in my career. That's what you said. Surreal, like some surreal shit, like some shit you couldn't believe happened. Oh, um, when Future had picked nigga and did that shit with Future. Yeah. It felt surreal. It felt surreal. <laughs> it felt surreal. Yeah. It felt, <laughs> it felt amazing. I said you was in the studio with Wiz, too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah but that, that was surreal. Nah, that was surreal, too. But nah, that shit just like... What y'all, y'all was cooking up the shit or what y'all was doing? Me and Wiz? Yeah. Yeah, I, we just got some shit. He put me on his album. He got some shit. He saved for his album. And he put me here that day. I was on tour with the nigga. Like, I fuck with him. Hell yeah! You got any uh, wild tour stories you can share with me? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no wild tour stories. No stories. <laughs> no stories. <laughs> what what no happens there stays there. Um, 
Yeah, I, but I wasn't doing shit. I was chilling. I was Gucci. I was going to get buddy. You feel me? Get my fans on. Get my uh, turn stage up. John Wynn. Shout out everybody on the tour. Yeah, tell me. Exactly. 400. 100 for sure. <laughs> what, what's a perfect day for Seti Hendrix? All right. A perfect day. I wake up first thing. Got to wake up. That's if I wake up. That's a, that's always perfect. Boom. Say my prayer. I work out. If I can get a raw ass hoop session in before twelve one o'clock or yeah. two at least at the latest, that yeah. raw. You a real hooper? You feel me? Boom. I hoop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? After I hoop, I already got me a session from like what laid out. Boom yeah. to boom. I'm in my session chilling. I got good zaza, good fruit. Got some raw ass beats. My boy Ace, he in a good ass mood. He ready to work. He already in that bitch loaded up. Got the mic yeah. outside. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh yeah. So I come in, some J's sitting on the counter, some shit, some raw ass J's. Yeah. A good ass, a look, a good <laughs> ass, some motherfucking um some wings and but it's a cage of fries with a brownie. Yeah. A motherfucking a weed brownie or a regular brownie? A regular brownie. Oh, okay, regular brownie. Okay. Chunk, that big, I do full of chocolate, so good as fuck. And then, and then, and then, then I go home and I do it on a little. Hell yeah. Me, bro. I, I see you got a new video dropping on Monday called uh, Dicky Fitted. Yeah, I'm dropping the video of Dicky Fit Monday for sure. What can the people expect in that video? I was just do ball the whole month. So yeah. really just land, showing the landmark to the city. Yeah. I'm in mascara posted up. Yeah. Just, you know, 1800 showing them what I did. Dicky fit my own little video. Yeah. What's your favorite food spot right now? Wing nuts. Wing nuts. That's that was with the wings and Cajun fries you were just telling me about? With the brownie. The brownie. Yeah. To die for <laughs> I like to ask these questions to if everybody I interview, if you could pick yourself to be any animal in the world, what would it be and why? A cheetah. Or a why a cheetah? Because that's my favorite animal. Okay. I like cheetahs for sure. Cheetahs, bro. What, what advice can you give to an independent artist? Keep dropping that shit. Stay true to yourself. Keep dropping that shit and try it. Network. Yeah. In this new era of music, we see a lot of niggas who do shit for cloud chasing and they're like just doing random shit to get attention. Mm -hmm. How do you stay out of doing shit like that? I just just be my just keep dropping. Just say, <laughs> just to, that's what I say. Stay genuine. Keep dropping music so you don't gotta do no sucker shit. You only gonna be known for he's a getting money, genuine, dropping music ass nigga. That's all bro do, bro. I don't be on none of that extra shit. He make good ass music. He stay in his lane. He be clean as fuck. You keep dropping, travel, network, and hopefully that if you a genuine person, your spirit, you should line up with the right stuff. The universe should line you up with the right shit. Hell yeah. yeah. What's your favorite type of weed? Uh, wedding cake, cookie. I love cookie. Wedding cake. Cookie, not even wedding cake. Cookie, period. Cookie is my favorite strain. Cookies, cookies is gas for sure. I'm smoking on some fucking gelato right now. That shit's solid too. That used to be my favorite weed. I got some shark out of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> You've been making music for a while. What do you think has changed the most in your music over the years? I've been doing. Would you call it four years a while? I mean, that's a good amount of time. Okay. Okay. Four years. I've been rapping four years. I say, what a change. My shit ain't that shit. It shit changed my shit. Um, people more people people more vulnerable in their music. It's more vulnerable. Everybody more vulnerable with their music now. Yeah. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like people we, ain't afraid to. I guess. When you say them. vulnerable, what, what do you mean? They more relatable, more ex, more access, more access. Like I can accept you more. More vulnerable mean like. More I eat appealing, more easy appealing. It's more it's more yeah. easy and more tuned to catch on the motherfuckers and understand rappers now. Like 
Yeah. You had to, you had the hip hoppers, then you had the too much lyrical niggas, then you had the too conscious niggas. It was, it was, you just knew a motherfucker could rap, but now it's like rappers are more vulnerable. You know yeah. what I'm they put emotions into the shit now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Ever did. For sure. You know, shit like that. Nah, nah I, can, I fuck with that heavy. How, how would you describe your sound? Rhythm, rhythm and gangster. Yeah. Soulful trap. Yeah. I'm a soul like for, I'm a soul I'm a soul for that gangsta and me. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> What's the place you want to travel to? Dubai in Africa. Is anywhere specific in Africa? Uh Mecca. Okay. I fuck with that. I wanna go both of the places. I wanna go to Amsterdam, hella bad though. I heard that's I ain't weird about that shit. I'm trying to smoke some weed in Amsterdam for sure. You said that shit boof. They said the weed boof? Yeah, that shit boof. That's crazy. That shit boof. That's crazy. <laughs> what are some other artists you like right now? Mm. I like Spin the Band, Go Crazy. Yeah. I like Chop. Yeah. With a K. I like, um, I like that boy. I like Poplar. Yeah. I, like, I like Roddy. I like No Cap, Rallo. Yeah. Baby. Um, Peasy. Shout out Peasy for sure. There's a couple more. There's a lot more actually. There's a lot more. There's a lot more I fuck with. Because I used to yeah, be yeah. Yeah. I like listen to nobody's <laughs> shit. I used to not listen to nobody's shit. Yeah. Yeah, I fuck with I fuck with the more I fuck with though. Wrong time. What is the biggest lesson you've learned so far in the music industry? Um is what it is. No emotion. Break by break, no emotion, and it is what it is. If I live by these rules and these rap shit, I'd be straight. Yeah. Do you think that uh the street should determine like the music shit. Do you believe like if niggas is beefing, niggas shouldn't make music together? You think music can solve that? How you feel about that? Nah, you can't solve that shit. Yeah. If we beefing, we beefing. Yeah. And it shouldn't even have to take it to music. It should uh, always stay off the mat, off the wax. It should always stay yeah. away. But but certain shit just can't get fixed. Certain shit niggas gotta um, niggas gotta handle up. Niggas gotta pay for what they said and for what they did. Yeah. Whether it be however it gotta be. Yeah. You gotta learn. Sometimes it can't be in our hands. We gotta put it in somebody else's hands. But you feel me? Yeah, I understand. How much do you uh, think like an artist should expect their friends to support their music like and post their shit? Like a lot a lot of niggas if will complain you, like that, friend, but people around me don't bitch. support. I fuck with this shit. If you my friend, you my dog. Excuse me. If you my friend, you my dog. Or whatever. And you fuck with my shit genuinely. Yes, I expect you to post my shit 110%. If every song I'm posting, you fuck with. If you don't fuck with my shit, I can't get mad. I can't get mad if you don't post my shit. Because, bro, you, you could just... Said I don't I don't like that song. Or that yeah. shit don't sound right. Or I don't like it. The shit I don't want to post it because it's gonna make me look like I like something and I'm posting something that I don't even like. I wouldn't yeah. tell you to do that. But if you like my shit, post that shit in. And what the fuck you telling me this shit wrong for my DM? Post this shit. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, because I'll be you. A lot of people will say like, "Damn, like them niggas don't fuck with me." But I like what you said though. If a nigga fuck with it, post it. If he don't fuck with it. Keep it G, and he ain't got to post it. Yeah, you ain't got to post it. But when a nigga tell you to post it, be like, hey, bro, G, I, I don't really like this shit. I don't want to post it. And if a nigga, a nigga can't be tempted by that. Yeah, nah, for sure. Do you believe that artists need a major label backing? Mm. Uh, yeah, 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 no. I don't know. I can't. I can't answer that. I can't answer that yet. I gotta wait till I'm. I damn. Cause, bro, like you don't need them, but even the ones who said they don't need them, they still use them to a degree. Yeah. So it's like, 
Yeah and no. Yeah. Now, I understand yeah. what you mean. What, what can the people expect coming soon from you? Got the album coming. Got video on Monday. Anything else? Yeah, BHD. Yeah, May. for sure. May. Uh, Dick and Fit finna drop Monday. And then I got BHD in May. At the BHD, I got for 2-9. That tape, yeah. that tape gonna fuck them up. This tape gonna fuck them up, but this next song gonna have, this next tape gonna have like 10, 12 songs on that. Really? So. All right, shit, I'm ready for it. So, For my final question, I wanna ask you, what advice can you give to like a younger artist who's trying to get into making music? Be sure this is what you wanna do. Don't just rush to just jump straight into music. This is what you wanna do, do great job. And if you do wanna do music, Know that this shit gonna cost. It's a constant, it's a constant, it's a constant win, man. It's a constant boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boom. Long last. Damn it. Hell yeah. Now, that, I, that's good advice. So the music shit for sure be costing. And I don't think people realize that at the jump. Like they gotta spend money to make the money. They're right. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. I appreciate you. You got any final words for the people that's tuning in? I fought with um I fought with Gigi Two G too. Her music raw as fuck. She next up. Yeah. That's one of the hardest females coming up in this shit. It's Chameleon and her. It's girl named Nala too. But them three yeah. females right there, that raw. Hell yeah, I'm gonna tap in. I appreciate you. For sure. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Have a nice day. You too, bro. One hundred.